All right, thanks for coming back to join us for the third video on how to produce this part. Uh, in this video, we're going to deal with the radial milling features, or all the features where we will be coming in on the diameter of the part. Uh, as with the axial milling that we talked about earlier, knowing where your coordinate system or the axis map is, is, is going to be critical in making sure you get the correct dimensions for the part. So anytime you are working with a, a radial feature, radial milling, radial holes, uh, what the machine is going to do to make, or what the control is going to do to make programming easy, is it's basically going to take your coordinate system and it's going to move it, if we're looking at this like it's our stock, just like it's sitting right on top of the part. So basically it moves it from where it is up to whatever your cylinder diameter is, and from this point here, it's like you're working on a mill with your X, Y, and Z axis. So you'll have your X and Y linear axes, and your Z will still be the depth of the features that you're programming. To show that another way, we'll take a look at the print. So again, it's going to essentially move your axis map, or your coordinate system, um, up to the cylinder diameter. And then you're going to have the X axis running this direction and then your y-axis will basically be running this way. So on this particular part when we're trying to give it the dimensions for this slot you'll see that we'll be giving it a negative 1.125 in x and when we are giving it the locations of these holes that we're going to be drilling we will be giving those both a negative and positive y location since this is now our you know, x, y, zero, and our depths will all be put in with a z axis. So let me go ahead and clean the print back off here, <clears throat> and we'll get to programming. Uh, we're going to start with the slot here. <clears throat> and on the particular view we're looking at here, we're not given all the information, the depths. Uh, we're going to take this slot a hundred thousandths deep into this material. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and go to Next Block. Again, I'm going to go into Live Tooling, and this time I'm going to use the Radial Milling options up here. So we will go into Radial Milling, and to create this slot, I'm just going to simply take that half-inch end mill that was defined in a, a previous video, and we're just going to run a full slot right through the top of this part, and we've got a half-inch end mill, and we'll get a half-inch resulting slot. So to do that, I'm going to use radial lines and arcs. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and give it the tool number. That uh, radial half inch end mill looks like was tool number eight. So give it the tool number. Uh, again, it wants to know strategy. I'm going to go ahead and rough and finish like we have been. This time here for my milling type, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use on. I don't want any cutter comp here, uh, but you'll see the options have changed a little bit here. Um, instead of inside and outside, we now have left, right, and profile left and profile right, as well as pocket boundary. Um, <clears throat> with the left and right, you kind of think about how you're programming, the geometry that you are creating, and whichever side of the line your cutter is going to be on, that's going to be your cutter comp. Uh, so typically you're going to be using a left cutter comp with climb milling. <clears throat> but for our uses here, we're just going to go ahead and leave our milling type as on. Uh, since I am doing a rough and finish with no cutter comp, it's only going to give me a floor allowance. I'll go ahead and leave about 3 thou on the floor for that finish pass. I'll give it a, a plunge feed. <clears throat> And again, uh, we're not going very deep here. I'm not going to take any pec depths on this part. So we've done everything we need to do on the process tab. Now we'll go into the geometry tab where we start to define the cut that we want to take. <clears throat> uh, we mentioned that it's going to move your axis map or your coordinate system basically up to the cylinder diameter. This is how the control knows what that's going to be. So you're going to tell it what the cylinder diameter is of the part, and it's just simply going to move your your axis map or your part zero, your your origin, if you if you want to call it that, 
to that diameter. So in this case here, that's an inch and a half diameter. So we'll make that 1.5. As far as coordinates, uh, radial milling, you'll notice you have the same options where you can choose either load, rotary or linear coordinates. In this case here, we have XY dimensions, so we'll go ahead and use linear. <clears throat> now that we are in a radial mill contour, you'll notice that uh, they've added a little something to all the, uh, the labels here. Uh, this is to let us know that this is not the X, Y, or Z of the machine. You're not programming a true X axis as far as machine is concerned, Y, or Z. This is, now all, this is all now relative to the axis map or the coordinate system that we're working for in radial milling. So just a little subtle reminder of, of what you're doing here. So for our X start, <clears throat> the face of this is going to be zero. So I want to put in a minus 1.125 for the X. <clears throat> My Y start, again, is going to be running right through the center of this part. Um, I really don't have a good dimension for where I want to want to start. I just want to make sure I start down here far enough that I am not um, plunging onto my material. So I think I'm just going to start down here, somewhere on the uh, kind of on the edge of the material a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put in a minus 0.75 for that. <clears throat> Again, Z start, Z bottom, these are based off of that, where we are on that cylinder diameter. So if I want to start, you know, 100 thou above my material, I just simply put in 0.1. And my Z bottom, uh, we're going to take this slot 100 thousandths into the material. So we're just going to put in minus 0.1. Again, coming off of that cylinder diameter. <clears throat> Uh, I am going to have to use the linear Y motion on this particular part, so I'll go ahead and select that. Uh, we'll come in and uh, turn that off here in a minute to kind of show you the differences. But uh, right now we've filled in all the information we, we can for segment zero, and all we've done is just kind of started right down here at this point. In order to continue this slot, I need to program a line, just a, a straight line, it's going to move to that end of the part. <clears throat> to do that, we're going to go to our next segment, and we're just simply going to choose line, and we're going to give it the information that we know about this line. <clears throat> <clears throat> as far as X end, it's going to end at the same point we started, so that'll be minus 1.125. And the Y end, we started at a negative uh, three quarters of an inch down here. So I'll go ahead and take it to a positive three quarters of an inch up here as well. So we'll do 0.75 for the Y end. And you'll notice it calculated the length and the angle for us. Both those look correct. So we should be able to go in and verify that feature. You can see we have a slot in the top of the part, and a good flat slot there. Uh, it did look like we were plunging off of the material. And then we fed all the way off it as well, so our, our Y start and end are, are likely okay there as well. <clears throat> Just to kind of show uh, the difference here, when we started programming this block, we checked the linear Y motion. If I were to go ahead and deselect this and then re-verify this, you're going to see a, a little bit different result here. When we select that y-axis, we're telling it to be able to pull, or that you, we want it to pull that tool off center to create this slot. If we leave that unselected, we're basically telling the, the control that we always want the tool on center point, facing towards the center. So you can see here, it's going to plunge here at the point we gave it, and rather than moving the y-axis, it's just going to rotate the C, and it's going to give you that slot there. So you can see uh, 
quite a bit of difference between the C axis slot. By checking that, the Y axis slot that we actually need. Uh, you will notice that anytime you do select linear Y motion, it does give you the option of giving it a C position if we wanted to rotate that slot elsewhere on this part. We'll go ahead and set it back to Y motion and then re-verify, make sure we have what we need. <clears throat> now you can see we've got that slot in the top of the part. So we'll go on to the, the next feature here. Now we need to put these holes in the part as well. <clears throat> you can see that we have a, uh, it's a 0.3125 diameter um, hole. I think we had set up a quarter inch. We'll go ahead to our tool setup and, and change that so it matches the print. And it says that they are 200 thousandths off center. So we're gonna have the Y zero here. We're gonna have one that's 200 thousandths below it and one that's 200 thousandths above. Uh, before I get too carried away, I'm going to go back into my tool setup and change that tool diameter for tool number 10. We made it a quarter inch drill. I'm just going to go into my geometry offsets and make that what we are looking for here. <coughs> So now we should match the print. To get these holes, I'm just going to go on to our next block. Again, I'm going to go into live tooling. And this time we're going to go into radial holes. <clears throat> it's going to be very similar to the axial holes that we dealt with in the previous video. Uh, this time just coming in on the, the diameter of the part. So we're going to give it the the tool number 10. <clears throat> Again, it's going to ask for the cylinder diameter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, one inch and a half that we had put in before. Uh, if we wanted to, we could decrease that since we've technically milled some of that material away. I'm just going to go ahead and remember that we're on the outside uh, diameter here and just adjust my dimensions accordingly. <clears throat> We're still dealing with linear coordinates, so I'll go ahead and leave that as it is. My rapid start point, I'm going to put a hundred thousandths outside of the part. My Z start, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put at minus point oh five. Remember, we've already machined away a hundred thousandths worth of material here, so now I'm I'm safe to rapid back to within that minus 50 thou. And then the Z bottom, I'm going to go ahead and take that to minus 0.3125. Got the same options here. Uh, you know, we got tip comp, we've got the uh, cycle types here. I'm going to go ahead and use a dwell cycle as well. <clears throat> and just tell it I want to dwell for a half a second at the bottom of each of these, these holes. So we've defined uh, <clears throat> the cycle. Now we need to go tell it where to perform this whole operation. So again, I'll go next whole operation. I don't need to add any more whole cycles. Uh, so I'm just going to go right into radial locations where I can define the XY location of these holes. <clears throat> when I come in here, um, you can see that's just asking for, for the XY location and where we want to return to in, in Z. So to start with, I know for X is going to be minus 1.125. And my Y, if I'm doing this bottom hole first, will be minus 200 thousandths. I believe it was 200 thousandths. Yeah, 200 thousandths off center, so we'll go minus 0.2. <clears throat> and then it wants to know where do you want to return when going from one whole location to the next. You can use your rapid start, your Z start, or another R plane. I'm just going to go ahead and choose my, my rapid start there, the 0.1 above. 
I'm then going to go ahead and add another location. It'll still be at x minus 1.125. And instead of being at minus 0.2, it'll now be at positive 0.2. Again, just on the other side of my y0. <clears throat> and on this particular one, uh, again, um, I'm going to need to check that linear y motion. I'll go ahead and leave it off at first so we can see the difference if we don't use that. I set this to transparent so you can kind of see. If we look out on the face of this, those holes are coming into each other there. Uh, they're, they're facing towards center. That is because I left that y-axis um, box unchecked. Anytime you're trying to drill a hole off center, you're going to have to go in and make sure you select the linear Y motion box to be able to pull that off center. And again, you do have the C axis position there if you need it. So we'll go ahead and draw this. <clears throat> should see the two holes now off-center uh, the way we need them on the part. All right, well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it has helped you uh, understand a little bit more of what you need to input in order to get the geometry needed when radial milling. Thanks again.